Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone, depending on where you are in the world. Um, my name is Lucien Zaborowski. I am the Associate Head of Marketing here at Creatio. And today I'm very excited to have two fantastic speakers with me, uh, Alex Donchuk, who is the Global Channel Director at Creatio, and Dr. Ashuk Supaya, co-founder and CEO of Mitra Innovation. We have a superb session for you, so we're, we're very excited. Uh, and again, I am very excited to have these uh, fantastic gentlemen with me uh, on this uh, super summer day. Uh, the topic of today's session is elevating digital customer experience, excellence with low code and real life examples. So the, the, the session is really about how organizations today are, are focusing on improving customer experience. And our goal is really to, to showcase some examples and, and really go with real life stories of, of how companies are doing it today, especially given the, uh, the current COVID-19 situation uh, this is the digital experience of, of customers and, and whether they are internal or external uh, is, is critical. So we are very excited and, and to have this session. And I will just start by uh, giving us a little bit of an intro into the agenda. Um, and uh, and it, is a, it is a very rich agenda. We have, of course, the introductions of the companies and speakers. Uh, and then we will go straight into talking about digital customer experience. What is going on in the market? What are the trends currently? Um, and 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 why why low code can actually fill in some of the the needs of 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 delivering superb customer experience? Um, that is that is an interesting and important connection that we want to make between digital customer experience and low code, uh, which you haven't heard. If you haven't heard about uh, yet, we will definitely explain a little bit what that what that concept means. Um, and then we will go into real life success stories of how companies are using low code to improve digital customer experience. We're also gonna talk a little bit about Creatio itself and our local platform. Um, and then we will have a Q&A session. So please put in any questions you may have directly into the chat area. Um, please also, if you, if, you, if you can hear us or you have any troubles with, with sound, Please let us know also in the chat. We want to make sure you can you can hear everything. So please make sure to comment in there. Um, finally, just uh, just some logistics. Uh, we will record the session. We will also share it with you uh, afterwards in an email, uh, and we will also try to address all the questions that you post. Um, if we cannot do it now during the Q and A, we will do it afterwards. So with that, it is my superb pleasure. Uh, to hand over to Ashok and uh, have him introduce himself. Thank you, uh, Vashon, for the kind introduction and also inviting me. Uh, it's a real pleasure to um, share some of my experience, especially in the customer experience world. Uh, quick introduction, uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Mitra Innovation, a UK headquartered global technology innovation company. Uh, we are a, a Creatio strategic partner, but we also do a lot of um, implementation of various products around the world. Uh, prior to my um, UK life, I was in the US for a long time, good 10 years, uh, was a founding member of a garage startup, uh, which is a, a, over a billion dollar company today called Vitusa Corporation, NASDAQ IPO'd. Uh, so that was my pedigree. Um, I was involved in starting various companies uh, in the UK and now I'm involved in some companies in Australia. So it's a real pleasure to be, uh, be here um, and also to share some experience. Uh, anyway, that's my quick introduction. Over to you, Lushan. Uh, thank you, Shog. Well, thank you. And now, of course, if you don't mind, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Mitra. We'd love to, to hear more about the company. Sure. So, um, in terms of uh, Mitra, we are an eight-year-old technology consultancy business. Uh, we do end-to-end uh, -end product development, product deployment, all the way from helping ISVs develop their product and deploy that product to large enterprises. Um, like uh, Travis Perkins in the UK. Uh, we work with uh, several healthcare financial services, some very large banks in Europe, uh, all the way from open banking to digital banking. Uh, we built our CRM competency in the last uh, couple, two years, specializing uh, around Creatio platform. 
but we have done over, um, I think about 500 projects in the last eight years. With that comes a lot of experience in integrating from supply chain to um, complete cloud automation, SaaS, PaaS. So a broad array of experience. Uh, our architects are well versed in bringing solutions together. Primary markets are UK, Europe, and Australia. But very recently, we have started doing some work in the US market as well, and in Cambodia and Vietnam. So yeah, we're very strong in the uh, overall program management, building custom experience solution to our customers. Fantastic. Well, with that, let's uh, let's switch gears and uh, now hand over to uh, Alex uh, Donchuk. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Donchuk, and uh, it's my pleasure being here with you today during this webinar. Uh, I'll be very brief about myself. Uh, joined this company 15 years ago. We're a small company in Europe, and I saw this incredible growth through all the years we have. I started the uh, Creature company back in Australia in 2010. And then we started our global expansion with other countries, and it was a really incredible journey and experience uh, from uh, doing the webinars like we have today, by the way, of talking what CRM is. And I clearly remember those days back in 2005, being uh, one of the first employees of Creatia, doing the same exactly job as we are doing today and bringing this technology to the people worldwide and saying the benefits and advantages of it. So I'm very excited that today my topic is not about CRM, but about low code, because we truly believe this is the uh, future. And I'll be very glad to share some experience and interesting real life examples of doing this. Basically about myself, I'm the head of channels. I'm managing uh, 700 partners in 110 countries globally. Uh, but if you've never come across a uh, creature company before, we were named as BPM Online. Maybe you remember this name of the company. We are a global software vendor. Uh, we provide the local platform for process management and CRM. Uh, as you see, we've been highly recognized uh, for the last 20 years as a market leader uh, by key industry analysts of Gartner and Forrester. And our products, they accelerate sales, marketing, service and operations for mid-size and large companies. As I mentioned, we operate in 110 countries and I don't want to steal time and thunder from our partner today, from Mitra, with their demo. And uh, I'm gonna get back shortly with uh, my piece of information to share with you today. But thank you very much for joining. We hope this webinar will be exciting and informative for you. Thanks so much, Alex. Uh, and now let's let's hand uh, hand over back to Ashok. Uh, Ashok, you are the expert uh, here on on what's going on out there in the market. So we'd love to hear from you. Tell us. Tell us, uh, what do you see in terms of digital customer experience? What are the trends and opportunities that are out there in the market right now? Will do. So when it comes to custom experience, it's, it's a term used um, from a consumer world to also on the B2B space. Uh, and, and I think we are starting to see even more aggressive demand for digitalization because of the lockdown and, and the future as McKinsey's and the gardeners of the world are predicting. And I think technology will play even a significant role, but we should never underestimate customer experience uh, because customers do really prefer a, a much richer customer experience than a very complex world. So in terms of uh, trends, uh, I think there are um, there's been a lot of research done uh, and here is something I would like to share. Uh, Gartner from their research are saying about 81% of the executives strongly believe their success will depend on the customer experience. So how do they get it right? How do they make the banking or a, a healthcare or a, even an e-commerce, how do they make it as simple as possible in order for them to get a bigger market share? But among the uh, several uh, prediction, uh, I, I was actually pleased to see some of the newer ones come into the picture. When I say newer one, technology that's been in R&D world for a long time, but I think they are going to become mainstream. Uh, one is AI powered. How can, how can artificial intelligence really deliver value than a hype? Uh, we actually working with uh, a product at the moment, which is a 
symptom assessment, uh, completely AI powered uh, technology that you can use to, de to determine what a health condition you may have and it, pr it predicts, it recommends treatment with 80% accuracy, which is pretty good. Uh, and similarly, there are more technologies coming into the market. Uh, the other one is voice uh, commerce, uh, you know, with the lockdown and uh, unable to go into shops until very recently, uh, more voice-based communication is becoming very important. And similarly, touchless card system is also more important. Right? So this will change how we order things, how we buy things. So our technology and what we offer needs to accommodate accordingly. Chatbots has been around for a while. In fact, uh, Microsoft um, talked about this back in 2016, saying the future will be all chatbot. But in the last five years, chatbot actually delivered only partial solution. It didn't deliver its full um, solution. However, with uh, AI and uh, some of the technology coming into the market, I think chatbot can reinvent itself and become very uh, personal virtual assistant rather than a yeah, I ask a question, it gives you one answer. Uh, the other one is predictive anal analytics in our creation as machine learning. There are other machine learning products out in the market, which means we can start to do a lot of predictive analytics and give more curated service to our customers. That's what Amazon does. That's what Uber does. Um, and Spotify is excellent. So how can an average commerce uh, provider or a supply chain provider or a um, a healthcare provider use predictive analytics. Augmented reality is another one. It's, it's used uh, in large uh, operations, massive manufacturing uh, type of a setup. But I think augmented, rea augmented reality could come into retail as well. As if you're buying, let's say, um, uh, a clothes or a hat or a watch, you know, you can use augmented reality to see how it really could look like before you go down that path. And obviously, security, uh, data safety, transparency, those are, uh, will, you know, they've been very important. Uh, as you go into the digital market very strongly, uh, there can be more security threats. So technology like quantum technology will become very important. Uh, now I'd like to share a little bit about what um, is changing or changed based on COVID-19 um, scenario. Uh, and, and no surprise, uh, digital traffic uh, is is gone on, gone through the roof. You you know you you obviously experienced yourself or you're from your friends and family. Digital commerce, uh, you know, the demand for digital commerce is not only for the big players like Amazon of the world. It's also your local butcher, your local fishmonger. They need to deliver the goods to you. How can they use the digital commerce? Um, I'm not, I live in London. Uh, I'm seeing a change already uh, the they are stylist uh, gym uh, facilities are actually coming to your home rather than you going to their facilities and interestingly they're charging the same fee as if you go to their go to their facility because they don't have to pay the rent uh, but instead they have some uh, transport costs but still i think it's a win-win for all parties so how do we how do you facilitate that kind of digital commerce is, is a, it's a very important for businesses, but demand is very high. Uh, I mentioned contactless, uh, you know, if you go to a park, or, you know, you go for a jog, you want to stop and buy an ice cream, you're not going to pay money anymore, you're just going to use a touchless card. So uh, the demand for contactless is becoming very important. So those who run large businesses, or even an SME business, if you are uh, involved in some uh, r retail payment operation, these are important elements to consider. Uh, the customer experience, uh, digital experience with the human touch is probably a winning proposition. Those who get it right can really dictate and demand the market. Uh, if, you, if you get it wrong, your competitors will take you out very quickly. So uh, watch out for those user experience, uh, leverage the right consultancy organization to provide that support that is very crucial. Uh, and lastly, um, you know, self-service is becoming more prevalent. Uh, you know, how many people knew what was Zoom back in January, February? Now it's just become a household name, Zoom is everywhere, which means people are happy to use technology, whether it's a self-service for a particular product they purchase and how do they want to install it, or how do they 
uh, set up a new online banking operation from home. Um, branchless banking is, is probably going to take off a lot more. A lot of banks are planning to cut down their branch offices. A lot of corporates are considering having their employees work from home even after lockdown, which means the technology will become pretty standard for all ages from very young to older people. So self-service is becoming a pretty pretty uh, standard. Uh, and, and also you would have seen uh, there's demand for a lot of um, conscious consumption and, and not doing a lot of um, non-essential purchases. So there are definitely a lot of uh, behavioral changes from that point of view. Um, it's uh, in terms of challenges. So the question is, if that's what the digital experience is all about, and these are trend, these are the trends that are changing. So what ex challenges do business really see at the moment? And I think this is very important to understand because the the low code solution helps us to overcome some of the challenges. Uh, one one of course is the um, uh, you know the, the the elements like siloed systems, uh, legacy application, outdated technology makes it very difficult to build a new solution. You are unable to respond to the market very quickly. A lot of companies are launching new products in four, six, eight weeks, whereas traditionally it has, you know the typical product life cycle is about nine months. So you don't have that luxury. So you need technology that can help you to launch products very quickly. With a limited bu budget, uh, lack of in-house expertise um, and constantly changing business priorities are a major challenge. Uh, my recommendation is reach out to your consultancy partners. Um, I mean, Mitra, we do that quite a lot to about uh, 80 customers worldwide at the moment. Leverage them; that is very important. And then, lastly, regulation is one we all need to be very conscious of and and be supportive. Uh, regulations like GDPR uh, is changing uh, in the banking sector. Open banking has been around for a few years, but PSD2 is now uh, moving into the next level. Uh, those who are in the um, uh, employee well-being field, uh, you probably are familiar with ISO 45001. I believe there's another 45003 is coming with some uh, criteria to consider in the healthcare, HL7, HIPAA uh, is evolving and changing. So a lot of regulation related aspects are changing. So you need to manage the custom experience improvement with the limited budget, overcome your technology solutions and make sure you can adhere to the ever evolving um, regulations. Now that looks, sounds extremely challenging, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's the real world. Uh, but yeah, I think there are technologies that uh, are coming and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about ex my experience on a product that we built and how all the how we were able, able to overcome some of these challenges. Um, at the end, I believe we have a poll, uh, Lushan. Uh, that's right. Thank you so much, Ashok, uh, for, for this for this uh, part about uh, the trends and challenges. Yes, we do want to ask uh, the audience a question. Uh, and this this relates to, to the topic, of course, of the webinar. and and. You know, given given the current situation, especially, um, how do you believe in your own organization? Um, do you understand customer behavior? Uh, do you understand it superbly, or are you think you need you have a lot to do still in this area? Um, tell us. We we'd love to know. Um, so we're going to launch the poll in in just a second. Um, and in the meantime, we're also going to, if we can, we're going to use the time to maybe uh, answer a question. Um, or, or ask a question to uh, uh, Ashok. Um, Ashok, tell us, you know, if you, in terms of, in terms of the challenges, you, we've seen this slide you showed us. In terms of the challenges out there that are happening, uh, is this really a good time to invest in new technologies? Not even low code, let's say platform, but in, in general, you know, there's there's a lot of challenges out there happening. So, what what should organizations do? Uh, is it is it really a good time to spend money? A fantastic question, Lejean. Um, I remember reading a uh, reading a uh, analysis of I think from Gartner or McKinsey. I, I forget. Uh, in the 2008, when the banking crisis happened, uh, there, were, uh, there was a recession which took uh, which lasted almost 10 years. But there was an analysis done back in 2011-12 to show which companies invested during that uh, low low down period time. 
and uh, how did how did they progress so that's when amazon really invested in the aws platform because they saw sme market were about to launch in a big way and they need this kind of self-help technology so to answer your question um, this is the time for organizations of all sizes to take take stock of what they have what they're offering products or services and similarly how do we how do they respond to the changing world uh, there's a clear evidence that uh, the new world will be different to the old world and there is a new set of requirements for from the customers so i think investing in technology either to op operate more efficiently uh, to reduce cost or to collaborate bet between the departments and be sell a more cohesive solution to the customers or if you're an sme or a startup how do you provide new products to the market but rapidly, that is very important. So I think this is a time to invest for sure. Thank you so much. Uh, Alex, would you agree? Yeah, totally here, I agree. And uh, I really would like to say to somebody who is honest on the poll, I see already the first results. I'm very excited to see this result, but some people, some companies actually are honestly saying that they haven't even started about the uh, sustaining the customer uh, digital behavior. And I believe this is a very good insight for all of us. And um, with Croatia, we are uh, like having hundreds and thousands of uh, customers around the globe. And sometimes we see these problems that sometimes companies really are keen to understand and how we can see and how we can improve this customer digital behavior. So as you see on the results, we, um, I want to again. No, no worries. I mean, of course, yeah, you guys, everyone should be able to see the, the screen. Uh, you know, the results are pretty spread out. I mean, a lot of companies do understand their, their customers' journey and, and digital behavior well. Uh, looks like looks like we have, uh, but we also have surprisingly, uh, to me actually, uh, that as many as thirty four percent still very mm. poorly understand customers' digital behavior. That is that is a big number. Yeah, that's a big number. Yeah. It's a big number. I think it's time. You know, it's time for me. The new technologies nowadays, the uh, the, the biggest driver right now, driving the company to the right direction. And if not now, when? And um, every single company is striving right now to win against competition. And I believe with our digital uh, experience, excellent digital experience with your clients and the excellent technology, that's, there is no pole position here for sure. Thank you, Alex. And Nashu, you were you were going to comment something still? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's amazing to see this result. Thirty-four percent uh, of uh, still sees they are not understood very well, and thirty-seven percent is only moderately understood. I think it's a good representation of uh, organizations in the U.S., U.K., Europe, uh, because the, the digital is not easy to master. Uh, it's very competitive, so it's not just digital; it's also getting it right. So I think um, interesting, interesting statistics. Thank you so much. Uh, well, then we're back to the uh, presentation, uh, and now um, we're gonna we're gonna actually talk about the well the, the key concepts so that we wanted to cover, and that is gonna be uh, with with Alex, and he's gonna talk to us about. Uh, the actual um, the low code. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be talking about low code, very <laughs> simple as that. But prior to go, we move on. Ashok, sure, thank you for uh, touching these current trends and challenges around customer experience. Now we have a good picture of what companies around the globe are facing. And uh, I suggest to discuss for us how low code can help with all kinds of organizations to solve challenges related to this customer experience so we can improve this percentage that we have so at the next time. Uh, prior will jump of what do local platforms enable, I really would like maybe to share with you a very simple message for those who never heard of low code at all. So I just really would like to make this very quick intro saying that the low code is a software development approach that requires little or no coding in uh, order to build applications and processes. As simple as that. So, in the platform, we have these intuitive tools um, that allow users with no formal uh, knowledge of coding or software development to create applications for many purposes related to the operational or customer facing processes, let's say business applications. And um, having this visual development environment, you can create applications with the graphical designer. And uh, 
this really gives you opportunity of drag and drop instead of traditional hand-coded computer programming. So in other words, Lucian, I, you would agree, this is like a revolution. We're going away from the old school hand-coded computer programming and allowing the people without deep technical background to create the enterprise grade applications. And here I would like to ask you the question here. Um, if you, in your company, and you're having this limited budget and resources, but you have a great idea and you see how the business gets much better with the help of this particular application. What are you doing nowadays? Uh, how do you manage this particular question without money and without the resources? So that's actually the first response of how low code platform can enable you to create these business applications without IT support, but having the citizen developers or business users create their own applications. Because once you have a platform, you don't need to reinvest by second, third, or number 10 applications. So your IT is uh, driving crazy just to manage them all. And once you have one environment, and once you have your business users who understand the business value of application, they have a clear vision on what they want to have in their departments. That's the key because we're enabling our citizen developers to create what they want, but not how IT sees that. Obviously, IT is playing an important, crucial part of managing these applications, but business users are on the front seat. And this is revolutionizing right now industry and the world because we get used that everything is coming from IT only, different way. Second challenge, and uh, Shoghi mentioned that as well, about the silent system. And silent systems does not allow you to cooperate and efficiently make your operation transparent and uh, effective. I'm sure that in some of your organizations, you have your uh, sales automation, one solution, you have another solution for marketing automation, you have a third service, we have something for uh, specifically like, I don't know, claim request or request management applications, and it's all siloed. What, what is the solution here? We truly believe that uh, system should be in on one, uh, all information should be in one single platform. We truly believe that you can create your new applications and bring them to the platform and create your processes and automate these processes without using the third party applications that need additional resources, additional time to manage. So single platform is the second key that low code platform really enables organization globally. And tell me uh, how outdated some of your solutions are today. Do you still use, uh, I don't know, Excel to calculate, I don't know, like even bonuses for your employees? Do you still uh, have your processes in the air and you know that uh, during the onboarding, it's difficult for you even to explain sometimes the chart that was printed out from the application that you created maybe uh, 10 years ago? I would say it is really a problem nowadays. And low code enables you without any technical um, knowledge, uh, create your own processes, automate your departments and bring this in the very easy to navigate interface to the final destination point to see how your department, how your company operates. And this is a pretty straightforward uh, question, but very rare we see companies where the head of departments or CEO truly understand at least how this company operates and what are the bottlenecks in the processes. And the fourth one is the key one. We all love, I don't know, during the COVID right now, it's not that we'll get a great example, but Uber, we love this application because it's just two clicks and you're going to the right direction. Why don't we want to have exactly the same solutions for our business? Why? Why are we just keeping up with having five or 10 screens if you're working in bank just to collect, connect this whole information in front of the customer? So we believe that uh, business users should be the driving um, force to organize their screens and give their feedback and to receive on the screen the best next action using the AI and machine learning tools to create those algorithms that will drive their team in a much better pace to the much better results without additional expenses. And what you can create using local platforms, that's actually a good question, but let's be very straightforward. You can create engage, you can create your own applications. Yes, truly as, as, as is, employees can build any enterprise grad applications for different business tasks. 
And these applications can be anything from customer facing applications like claim management, uh, custom onboarding, uh, loan automation, compliance management, depending on the industry we, we, in which you are in. And you also can create a complex business process for more effective and personalized customer engagements. And business process is the leading force here because users can define the workflows, as I mentioned before, and can build those process for any task and any complexity task to automate your operations, not only in your department, but through all the organization. And uh, the third one is operational efficiency. Uh, 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 it's obvious that if you'd like to be uh, operationally efficient, you need to have the applications to automate the processes to increase the efficiency in your departments. And these apps can provide several benefits to a business, including uh, the reduced cost, uh, the reduced risks of error through automation, and uh, all things related to the sum um, monotonous work, uh, routine work that we sometimes do and uh, our team is wasting time, barely time on it. The last two elements are uh, pretty uh, important that in place, as I mentioned, can define and configure data models, uh, business logic, and create the user interface for uh, web applications on the mobile devices. Uh, and we're going to actually show today one of the example, a real-time example with uh, Mitra Solutions. Um, and AI-based solutions there, uh, okay, so right in the next slide, but the next best action is super important for your in-play, based on analytics and the best um, uh, experience of your company based on ML tools uh, to win against your competition. Um, interesting uh, insight here about the, uh, what can low-code automate, and here, if you can just, uh, excuse me, but I can say everything. If you really have a business ideas, we truly provide a platform that really can automate your business ideas in minutes. And um, but you, some of you can ask me, but what exactly? Because we're talking about very large uh, space and big environment of domains. But organizations obviously can use local technology to automate uh, tasks in areas of projects, requests, uh, document management, uh, inventory management, communications, much more. But what is more important that every department can benefit from low code, whether it's a customer facing or not. And there's truly no limit on how much low code can empower businesses and the number of applications. It's just a matter of your business strategy and your business vision. And here we're coming to a, a quick overview of uh, creation community and the power of low code and having more than 700 partners globally that we manage here at Channels team I can be like uh, talking maybe for an additional couple of hours about all those solutions, but here we would like to very briefly give you a helicopter view of what we're providing our business users and our partners and our clients with. So basically the creation platform whole has all these important elements uh, that I just mentioned before for, for example, process modeling. We have this intuitive interface, this process diagram designer, and the storage of all the business processes. And a part of that, we have administration tools where you can define the user and role administration rights, where you can uh, manage the access rights and do all the things related to the administration. Obviously, while managing your applications, you have to keep track of the life cycle of each applications and uh, monitor and receive feedback from your team uh, to make uh, this uh, life cycle uh, healthy. And the application design tool, I won't be stopping here. Lots of things, but everything you could see about the design, about the case designer, ML designer, uh, business rules designer, and all related to designing applications, we have the full set here. And uh, we are very proud that some of you who are present today, are partners, are managing them well and creating sophisticated unique solutions. So, uh, boiling down, uh, once we provide the local platform, we have already ready to use components and you can use them like from the shelf out of the box and uh, bring them to your particular application. You, you, you can use all the marketplace connectors and add-ons uh, if you would like to connect it to a different applications or create some, add some specific add-on like for example here an example we have GDPR that's truly important for the European region actually right now it's going globally. But in other case, we can also take the full ready to go modules. We can go with the context account management, knowledge management, contract management, anything that you need to have out of the box is 
already on the platform. And here in the example, uh, I just want to bring you to uh, our to Australia, to our partner QTX Solutions, who uh, managed to uh, bring their idea to life about the franchise management Croatia, where they practically built on the on their experience of lots of years of working with the franchise companies on how to recruit, operate, manage contracts, and manage all the compliances with the franchise management solution. And it's completely based on Croatia platform. So out of the box solution is ready to go. Then these guys thought, all right, we're managing different projects. And that was a crazy idea, but they created another um, great example uh, is a contact center product suite. This application that sits on top of Croatia uh, makes significantly easy for a uh, service team to operate a contact center uh, and all the things related to the service. Indeed, uh, you would not expect um, a customer center representative to have uh, an IT to be an IT expert. Uh, so you have to do all the manual tools. That's why these guys create a unique product suite just to have a powerful uh, application to improve the customer experience through the contact center in place. Um, and um, the last but not the least, we also have um, our good partner from Belgium, from Europe company, Volkia, and Tom Simon, the head of this company. And they managed to create an example of um, uh, batch experience that their time manager of Croatia gives project management much enhanced capabilities to track uh, projects, to make sure they're in scope of their time. Um, project managers in the whole organization can see uh, all information about the project and uh, all the outcomes they have for it. So again, we have our own uh, project management tool and they decided to create a sophisticated, unique time manager for creatures so they can keep track of their resources and they bring it to the marketplace. So if you think that this element is important for you to run your operations, you're just taking it from the shelf and you're using it from day one. How cool is that? And we believe this is like the future when you can bring all these things from this out of the box, bring them to your application and start running it. Super, thank you, Alex. This is this is super information. A lot about our community, a lot about the the apps that have already been built. Uh, we're going to hand over to Ashok in just a minute for um, for one more fantastic example from from Mitra. Uh, but before we do, let's run a quick poll. Uh, and and this about the in in customer experience and where do you see those investments going? Uh, what are your own priorities? Uh, what do you think should be the priorities right now? Uh, just give us just give us some idea of, of what is happening with your own organization um, and your own personal view. Um, in the meantime, we have some questions coming in from the chat, so let's just use two minutes for for that. Uh, one question, uh, Alex, I'll ask you. Yeah, you, sure. you mentioned our marketplace and our community, mm -hmm. and and tell us more about the applications that are in there. How do companies put applications there? How do they create them? What kind of businesses can create applications that are put into the marketplace? Um, what yeah, this question is, yeah, thank you first of all for this question, um, uh, how, how do we operate, how do we work? So uh, first of all, we truly understand that partners that are working with us for many, many years, and some of them are having like 20 plus years in the industry of CRM, BPM, and uh, other industries, they have a great experience and they understand their market needs, and sometimes they after implementing four pro, four or five projects and doing the same task, they just say, hey, let's just bring it to the marketplace. So once next time we have this particular request, we can sell it out in the bus. So our partners are the main driving force who are creating those unique uh, marketplace applications and bring them to, the, to this marketplace on our website. And we like offering them for free uh, or with the, like, not a big charge. But you, if you'll notice that we have, I think around like 350 applications already, and this is an, an excellent uh, pace right now that we're following with our partners. Uh, but secondly, we also have um, uh, some uh, small applications created by the business users. And I can bring some ex some examples from uh, European countries where our consultants, even with the with no technical background, created some very light applications. But they're pretty cool just to have uh, for some companies, and they're being used. And some of them are even free of charge just to promote the company. So the main driving force is partners, but we truly believe that in the future, all the business users are gonna be uh, contributing to this marketplace. How to, if you'd like to have more information about this, you just can ping many time, listen is the, uh, just res respond to any of the emails we sent to invite you. We'll be glad to discuss if you would like to become a contributor to this marketplace. So just to get more information on how this marketplace works, 
it was just five seconds more, we truly guide every single partner on how to do this best of breed applications. We're guide, we're giving them instances free of charge, we're giving some navigation, discussing the ideas. So in the market, we have a great applications coming out and they all certify, I mean, application certified. Super, thank you, Alex. So, uh, you know, a little bit of a pitch to all the potential partners out there. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, but uh, but let's move on because we already have the results here. Uh, so let's let's see what this tells us. Uh, there we go. Wow, again, a pretty split uh, split voting here. Um, we have really across the board, uh, looks like, you know, there's lots of things that organizations want to do uh, and it's pretty even. So, uh, Ashok, yeah. Alex, any comments on this? Yeah, I can say it's pretty even. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to, hard to pick a winner. Yeah, it's a good good split. It looks like a more, little bit more focus on analytics, which uh, is, as I mentioned earlier, predictive analytics uh, is very important. But I think uh, the marketing customer uh, and, and consolidation, because that's still a massive headache for large enterprises. So I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and I think I just want to give one last comment from my side that uh, we talk about the components, right? Do you remember like, the slide I showed you said on the components and analytics and dashboarding are also embedded to our platform. So for those 28%, we can try test and drive, test drive this, our analytics and dashboarding, our uh, solution of local platform available free of charge on our website. Just try it out and let us know what you think. Super, thank you. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on uh, not to, not to waste any time, back to the presentation, and then now back to uh, show. Time. This is this is the the highlights uh, really of our presentation. I think here, uh, Asha, we we are very excited to to so for you to present this next part. Brilliant. Thank you. No pressure. Uh, excellent. So I think um, Alex have um, set the stage in terms of what the marketplace offers and what is the um, opportunity for companies like Mitra Innovation as a, as a partner, how do we, uh, how do we um, take advantage of the low-code platform and how do we build the uh, solution on top of it? So the case study I want to share is um, a platform that we started developing earlier this year, uh, which is called Dynamedics, built on top of Creatio's low-code platform. Now, what I'd like to share is um, Mitra as an organization has uh, multiple verticals and deep experience. Healthcare is one area. We have done a lot of work. We work with Philips Healthcare. Uh, we are doing some work with the NHS hospital in the UK, uh, with Ramsey Hospital um, and Terry White in Australia. And, and very recently, we are working with one of the largest insurance provider in, in the US. So with our collective experience, we were able to look at what's uh, out there, uh, what customer experience gaps are available uh, in the market, what's the new world is going to look like, and we zoomed into the well-being. So this is employee well-being as well as patients um, from a clinical point of view, how do we look after them and how do we give them that well-being. That's the kind of area we focused on and we built this platform and we managed to get the platform deployed at uh, some customer sites as well. So it's been a success story uh, and I think that was only possible because of the low code platform. So in terms of uh, <clears throat> Dynamedics, why did we choose this route? Uh, one, I think uh, the, the low code gives you seamless integration. I think in the, one, in the poll, we 19% said system integration silos is a, is a challenge. So, and I have that experience. I have done a very large consolidation for Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan Chase, uh, Bank One. Uh, it is a nightmare experience. So I don't want to do any of those things in this platform. I want to make it very simple. So integration was very good. Security scalability is paramount. The cloud hosting as a SaaS solution with a full security is very useful. The low-code technology allows us to do rapid automation. We can automate the workflow process very quickly. And it gives us an opportunity to take a concept to market in a very, very short period of time. In fact, uh, our first customer in Boston, we got them up and running within two weeks uh, once the platform was built. So that was a great success. Uh, and I think the, the focus here is creating a positive impact in this um, changing, uncertain world and how do you use technology but deliver innovation? Uh, I think that's very important for those who answered some of the poll questions 
in terms of digital experience in your organization, how you want to take it to the to the next level. So very quickly, in terms of um, what does this application provide? What's the benefit to you, uh, whether you're an employee or, a, or or in the medical side as a patient? Uh, one, we were able to uh, reduce, um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the case study shortly, but in, in the Boston case, we actually able to reduce the uh, uh, COVID virus spread. We were able to manage that whole workflow and, and provide that productivity improvement. So that's a key, key benefit there. Secondly, we are working with insurance companies to create an automated claim approval if it is a, a insurance healthcare provisioning. And if we bring in the health, uh, the well-being surveillance, including mental well-being, which is an area we have deep domain experience. We are working with 10 psychiatrists in Asia Pac to deploy this uh, to, the, to the Australian market next month. So there's a lot of expertise around mental well-being care workflows we were able to build on top of our platform and bring in that insurance ex expertise as well. Uh, it brings in the duty of care compliance. Uh, you know, if you have 10, 50, 100, thousand employees in your organization, and if you're a, a, a regional manager or a managing director, you have a duty of care towards the people and how do you make sure they are getting the right support they needed. And if somebody's unwell, how do you stop them from bringing the sickness into your office and it resulting in a lot of absenteeism, productivity loss. So that is very important and, and really bring in the, the wellness part. Uh, in the platform itself, under the hood, uh, from the creation, it provides security, record uh, maintenance, data control, analytics, as Alex said, it has messaging, email, etc. What we did was uh, we built the video conferencing, teleconsultation, so we connected to Zoom, Microsoft Teams, we are connecting into other technology as well. So it has a full teleconsultation for various uh, industries. And on top of that, we built three products that you're seeing in the boxes. Uh, the front line is around uh, health, safety, and uh, environment support. So if there are uh, employees working, working in a field, whether it's a rail sector, mining, uh, construction, how do you make sure they are um, healthy on a daily basis? Uh, there's a pre-screening we have put together on the COVID-19. We do risk assessment. We help the supervisor to manage the whole workflow. Uh, we are building a similar product for uh, workspace. So these are employees returning to work, but how do you manage their uh, mental health? Because in the current context, they probably have some issues to deal with, but when they come to the office, are they safe? Do they feel comfortable? The whole thing. And then the mental health management is the clinical side. So we built three products on top of the Dynamics platform, and we were able to build all these very reliably with API integration, uh, full security management, dashboarding, analytics, et cetera. And it connects to hospital management system, HR systems, and various other products that, that we were able to, able to pilot in already. So just quickly, a couple of case, uh, three case studies to highlight. Um, the Plum House is the construction uh, company in Boston. We got it up and running. It's been running for a good three months now. We have done, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it, but that's actually, it's working really well. It's helping them to keep their people very safe. Agilis Health is a brand new startup. Uh, we are talking about how do you take advantage the, the situation and how do you innovate. It's a consortium of various companies, including medical labs, providing COVID-19 testing. Uh, they are targeting to do about 20,000 um, COVID-19 testing and of course, antigen and, and vaccine once they're available. Uh, by September, it's in pilot at the moment. They already got four customers and they're using Dynamedics to manage the entire workflow. And the Ramsey Australia is the hospital I mentioned in the Australia working with their psychiatrists and uh, they're actually going after an unmet uh, demand uh, or to provide much more uh, collaborative, friendly mental health uh, uh, management for their patients through using teleconsultation. Um, just a plum house, uh, we had done over 8,000 screening in the first uh, month or so. We saw uh, quite a lot of rejection. Our platform managed the entire rejection based on WHO, CDC guidelines, and we were able to see um, a lot of productivity uh, because the employees were able to do the screening before they actually came to the facility itself. So it's a great ROI we were able to deliver. 
Uh, then now I'm going to show you a quick video. I'm hoping this video will work, and then I will do a I will show the application for a few minutes as well. And then those who are interested in the platform, please reach out to us. It's available in Marketplace as well, which I'll show you shortly. So let's see if the video works. So the, the, the target was to really help employees return to work, uh, help them to get the events uh, operating. It has full traceability analytics built into it. It has a screening application like what you're seeing. People can say how well they are. Uh, based on the information, management will know how many people are coming to a site. Are they meeting the CDC guidelines? Uh, it has full COVID-19 risk assessment. Uh, management. It has full teleconsultation, as I mentioned. You can schedule appointments if you are interacting with uh, investors and, and patients. And also, it's fully WHO compliance in terms of uh, health uh, capabilities, the criteria, etc. And as the policies are evolving and ISO standards are coming into the market, we are able to update it and make it available. And the good news is Dynamics is in the marketplace. Uh, there's a URL at the bottom. Uh, I'm sure it will be in the video recording later. You can um, download it, use it. Uh, if you want to customize it to your customers in your region, we are more than happy to participate and support. Uh, that's a quick, um, just a background about how we were able to build a platform very quickly. Uh, before I move on, uh, I'm going to invite my uh, product manager, Special Aisha, uh, to do a screen sharing. And um, if it all works well, she'll be able to see the show the application uh, and some of the detailed features. Aisha? Thank you, Ashok. And hello, everyone. I'm just confirming you can see my screen. It's wonderful to be here with all of you today. Um, and as Ashok mentioned, we're going to give you a live demo built on the low code creation platform to design a simple, intuitive experiences for employees uh, combating the pandemic right now. So we are actually looking at this at three primary users, contractors or permanent employers. Uh, supervisors and then your HR department or your HSC office. So let's start with a look at the contingent workforce. This is anyone working in the front line from the mining industry to the likes of construction, oil and gas, and of course, our first line respondents in healthcare as well. So doctors and nurses, anybody who uh, is in the front line uh, addressing the pandemic or uh, general lines of work that requires to be uh, at a multi-site distributed workforce. So the pre-screening really uh, enables your contingent workforce to uh, re-evaluate their risk before they report into work. So reducing or completely eliminating contact and the spread of disease. Um, so let's run into a quick demo now. Um, I'm just moving into the demo. Um, this is a wellness check. So you have the automated well-being assessment, uh, a pre-screening questionnaire to determine the level of risk within your organization. So this is based on a very simple, clean, and uh, um, uh, intuitive interface to prompt for a health baseline. You start by gathering your contact information to identify your contingent workforce because this is between contractors and your permanent workforce as well. Um, and then you actually move into consent management, ensuring that you know uh, adhering to GDPR and PII data storage. And this will then go into a quick COVID-19 wellness check. So this is the pandemic module. Um, so here, this is based on the CDC, Gov.UK, World Health Organization risk assessment profiles for organizations returning back to work. There's a quick symptom check. This establishes underlying health conditions so that you can elicit health risks pertinent to that specific individual employee. So with this health baseline, you can continually monitor and periodically based on their work assignments and task allocations. So this is your daily check-in. Uh, you confirm your presence at the site. I also reflect very quickly on your mental and emotional health status. Uh, go through any uh, standard operating procedures with uh, safety tips that you want to impart as part of your organization. So it's quick, simple. It's a daily or based on a periodic 
review of your task allocation. So uh, it's easy to reinforce safety uh, amongst the contingent workforce, which sometimes can be difficult with contractors and uh, a distributed workforce. This information captured now, uh, the health surveillance, is then disseminated to supervisors, who is our second kind of uh, user within this uh, COVID-19 module. So the supervisors uh, and the foremen, so the line managers at the work site, now have a handy list of those uh, who are approved on their workforce because the pre-screening provides an instant notification and health advisory based on the individual's health status. and that information is now cascaded down to the supervisor eliminating uh, you know uh, a lot of paperwork ensuring there's no risk at the work site itself because this is all done automatically so again we are going to look at the supervisor's um, interface over here again it's simple and clean on the low code platform um, you you have an easy handy list of everybody who is approved to come into work you can report back to headquarters in terms of any health conditions, uh, additional concerns that has been reported. Um, so there's a easy collaboration between headquarters and uh, um, the the site, and this is distributed work sites, you know, all across uh, your organization, whether that's your health workforce or, uh, in this case, you know, we spoke about a construction team. Um, so we can maintain and ensure duty of care by ensuring that we have all of this reported. Um, so this is also going to ensure that uh, you can report on no-shows and so on. Finally, we'll take a look at what does this all mean to management. Uh, so when we move into company-wide views, uh, ensuring uh, duty of care for your organization, these include HR managers, your HSC directors, any other health service providers you have partnered with, you know, whether that's your occupational health partners, insurance partners, um, so the information that you capture on, on overall uh, health uh, surveillance that you're running through obviously needs to then cater to uh, uh, adjustable or configurable insights to each of these different uh, partners within the ecosystem. So let's take a look at that. Now over here you have the daily health screening. Um, so there's a quick information here in terms of uh, the run through uh, of all the folks who were in, involved in your daily site, uh, employees at risk, who have been cleared for work, how many pre-work assessments have been done, a nice audit log in terms of contact tracing, uh, ensuring that you have everybody uh, in your uh, database with the sites, the locations, the date. You see on the top uh, the, the risk profiling based on CDC, World Health Organization, Line, uh, profiles it's all automated there were questions about you know can business processes be automated can we actually uh, streamline some of the workflows and with the low code platform we could and then moving into uh, really moving into expanding it can we actually give health test services can we actually screen for uh, additional services like uh, uh, COVID-19 PCR testing or antibody testing and so on so uh, I think the benefit of the low-code platform is that, you know, all of this is customizable. In our poll results today, the majority of attendees in this webinar actually reported analytics and dashboarding as one of the highest priorities to your organization's current digital customer experience priorities. So all of this, uh, if you see across it, uh, you know, the employee health testing, your daily screenings, incident management, for all your different cohorts is extremely customizable and the insights uh, can vary in terms of uh, the information that is provided. So that's a quick demo from me, uh, team. Um, uh, if there's any questions, like Ashok said, we'd be happy to uh, have further discussions related to it. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you. Lushan, over to you, Lushan. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Isha Ashok, uh, for the presentation and for the uh, for the live demo. Uh, we are back to the presentation. We are running uh, out of time, uh, so we had a couple slides around uh, uh, Creation itself and our platform, but we will but we will just uh, skip those and we'll go uh, right to the Q and A. Uh, just bear with me. I'm trying to uh, get us there to that slide, but uh, but but actually, you know, we don't even need the slide. Um, we can we can start with some of the questions that are already in the in the chat, um, and actually let's let's go with this one that we were just uh, covering about Dynamatics. There's a question here, um, Ashok Aisha, to to you. 
Uh, and the question is, let's take a mid-sized business of, let's say, a thousand employees. How much time will it take to set up Dynamatics from scratch? Uh, so Ashok, uh, to you, tell us, tell us, how much time does it take uh, to set up Dynamatics? Uh, the good news is Dynamatics is up and running. It's a cloud-hosted uh, SaaS application, pretty straightforward to, uh, to use. Where we will need some time is customizing to a particular uh, use case. So if there are no use cases, we can get it up and running in a few days. But if there are some changes required, we might uh, take maybe two design sprints. Our design sprints are five days each. So two to three weeks, we can um, completely test it, deploy it, and get uh, all the employees on board. The, the employees interface is pretty straightforward. They really don't need any help. Uh, it's a self-help uh, capability. It's only the managers who might need some help and we do the custom onboarding training for the managers. Super, thank you. Uh, there's another question that, that uh, might be a good one for you. Uh, and the question is, how do business owners have the knowledge of the entire system and interfaces? And this question refers really to, to the, the visibility of, of what you have in your local platform as a business. And, and how, do, how do business owners make sure that they they don't create solutions that create issues in other areas, right? So how is there, how do we make sure there is, uh, the systems uh, aren't kind of fighting with each other and that, that uh, local actually helps and, and doesn't make things worse? And, and, and both uh, Alex and Ashok, feel free to comment on this one. Yeah, I'm happy to, uh, to take, uh, to share my experience. So I think it's a very good question. Uh, when you're developing a new proposition, uh, sometimes you need to know what is feasible and what is not feasible. Uh, the low-code platform has a lot of capabilities because if it is business process workflow, you can do a lot of customization. But there are, if you require some sophisticated functionalities, there do there is some limitation. So usually, the business owners need to say, "Here is what I'm looking for," and the business analysts, like who we have, the consultants we have, we need to say what is possible, what is not possible. Uh, I think the question is not about interfaces or integration, it's about data. What data do, the, do we need for that application to work and where do we get the data? Is it in the uh, local platform? Is it in your CRM? Is it in your HR system, inventory system? And then we need to figure out a way to collect the data. So I think it's more about understanding what is possible and not possible and where do we get the data is probably our word answer that. Super, thank you, Shok. Uh, last one, and this one is, is pretty general. Uh, Alex, so where do you think uh, low code will be in five years? What do you think is the, the next five years look like? <laughs> you know, I truly believe that this is a revolution right now. I truly believe it is because I see the pace. Um, I don't know about the exact numbers, but I know that in five years, the market is going to grow five times. So just imagine if the market is going to grow five times in 2025, so it will actually mean that every uh, third, fourth company will actually will accept this technology and will understand that it's time for us, for business users, to take this driver wheel and just driving these innovations and bring my ideas to life. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to compete or even survive. So this is kind of train that is moving. It's, they, of course, there is lots of challenges to think over, bring this, just get accustomed better to this technology. But again, this is already like in the move. This, and we have right now, uh, okay, let's be honest, like 80% uh, of uh, the clients right now who are knocking the doors and asking for the CRM, they're actually looking right now for a CRM and low code and business process automation, obviously. Because uh, the CRM just to put data in, this is like 15 years ago. Nobody wants to have this solution anymore. Without BPM, without low code approach, uh, you won't be able to gain an operational efficiency and uh, do your job better than you were doing 15 years ago. I, I totally agree. Uh, and with that, I think we're gonna be closing our session. But before we do, I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to um, something something that uh, Creatio has developed. And if you are interested in low code, this is how you can find out, learn, and and, and just, just get, get you up to speed in terms of low code app development on the Creatio platform. We have a course on udemy.com. Uh, it takes one business day just a little over. There's eight modules. Uh, so please check it out um, and, and, and see if you, if you, if you can um, see what it's all about. Um, or if you just want to improve your skills, 
uh, this course is, is, is there for you. Uh, so please go ahead and, and, and try it out. Uh, and with that, we will be closing the session. I would like to again thank you very much, you. Uh, uh, Alex and, and uh, uh, Aisha and, and Ashok for the lovely presentation. Uh, make sure to check our YouTube channel. This this recording will be on YouTube on, on the Creatio channel. Subscribe to the channel to look up for other videos from other webinars. And as I mentioned, we will be following up with the recording and with answers to your questions. Thank you so much, everyone. We're looking forward to another webinar very soon. Thank you for your time. Thank you.